Hello everyone, my name is Lisa Stuve. I'm in charge of international relations at the Health Data Hub in France, and I'm here with Iman Zidi, who is an international policy trainee. Today, we're presenting you the international benchmark of health data access and health data governance structures in the European Union and internationally. And the Health Data Hub is the unique gateway to access health data for public interest research in France. The outline of our presentation today is going to happen in four parts. First of all, we would like to give you some updates on the European context of health data governance. Secondly, we would like to present you the international benchmark method, as well as an overview of the analyzed structures. Then we're going to present you the results by category of analysis, and those which are directly comparable to the Health Data Hub, which is a health data platform. And fourth, we're going to present you the best practices from other actors within the international health data ecosystem. Let's go for the first part on the international um, overview and context of European health data governance. What's going on? So basically uh, health data sharing and health data reuse for secondary purposes for research and innovation is not as widespread as it could be in the European Union. So we took over this slide from the European Commission which very correctly represents the challenges that are currently encountered for the sharing of health data across the European Union. First of all, there's limited data available for the secondary use for innovation and research purposes. There's an insufficient number of public sector data which is made available, a lack of visibility and difficulty of data access as of today. And there's very few um, voluntary mechanisms of data exchange happening between not only companies, but also between public structures. And last but not least, a lack of clarity on the reuse of private sector data for public interest research, just to name a few. Other obstacles as are that there is a lack of a global approach to health data governance in the European Union, both from a legal perspective, as there is a heterogeneous implementation of the GDPR, but also from the technical perspective between sectors, there's a lacking standardization, and lacking interoperability of health data because the majority of health databases are not, as of today, interoperable. There's also few European solutions for data storage and data processing in place. And currently a lot of discussions are ongoing named, for example, Gaia-X, and also, of course, we're gonna talk about this, the European health data space. There's also a lot of lack of competency in health data management, and there's no real health data sharing culture and also a lot of lack of health data literacy ongoing. And also a lack of citizens empowerment mechanisms around health data. We can also say that there's a European single market uh, fragmentation which has happened and which is a real obstacle. So we've listed some of the, these obstacles identified by the European Commission and to face these challenges, uh, the European Commission early 2020 has launched large scale initiatives that aim to create the future European health data space. It all started off with the European strategy for data last um, 2020 and various other legislative instruments and funding programs which have been implemented as a next step, which we're gonna look at right now. To respond to these challenges, the European Commission and other European actors have put in place various instruments to announce and to structure and to prefigurate the European health data space. As I mentioned, there's the European data strategy, which not only looks at health data spaces, but also at data spaces in other sectors. Late 2020, a first proposal of the Data Governance Act has been published by the European Commission and which is currently being uh, negotiated and under discussion by all member states of the European Union. This will lead as a concrete application of this Data Governance Act to a Lex Specialis on the European health data space. It will be a legislative proposal that is sought to be proposed by the end of 2021. And all of these uh, legislative uh, texts are going to be accompanied and they're gonna be nourished by the TEDAS joint action. So what is TEDAS? TEDAS is towards a European health data space. It's a joint action. So it's a funding instrument by the European Commission, co-funded by the Commission by 60% and 40% by the EU member states, which seeks to suggest options for health data governance, infrastructure, data quality, and citizens. So basically this includes 
how citizens can be involved in this European health data space, but also practices of data altruism. There are a lot of investments which have been announced to support the European health data space, which are part of the EU for Health program, and also more widely speaking, the common data spaces in other sectors, such as Horizon and Digital Europe programs, and also on digital health and the secondary use of health data. Codes of conduct by sector have been announced to support the secondary use of health data and which are jointly developed by relevant national actors in collaboration with each other. A pilot project has been announced. It's more like a study of feasibility of the implementation of a small scale European health data space, which could mean that health data platforms like the French Health Data Hub, FinData, the Danish Health Data Authority, for example, to be confirmed, but maybe also the German future platform Datrav and the Norwegian health data analysis platform could join along with European actors such as the European Medicines Agency, the European Center for Disease Control and many others. And of course, the European Commission, which will be uh, guiding these, um, this important work and which is supposed uh, to happen in the second, in the second uh, semester of 2021. Last but not least, various other funding opportunities are available so from 2021 onwards, there will be e-health studies and also calls for projects by uh, member states and they will facilitate the economic relaunch happening uh, after this uh, very important COVID-19 crisis that we have all faced. There's also the European Regional Development Fund, the European Social Fund, InvestEU, just to name a few. All of these instruments are underpinned by a strong political commitment by European actors and first and foremost, the European Commission. The president of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, in various speeches, uh, not, not only starting in September, but even before that, has underlined the need to create a European health data space. But also the European Council has strongly underlined the need for that. In the last semester of 2020, there's been the German president European Union and has launched important events uh, underlining the need for this European health data space and various other communications have taken place. Just a few words on this Data Governance Act and the European health data space. Again, we're taking here a slide from the European Commission. The Data Governance Act is a European regulation and it's a general framework setting the minimal standards and rules for the use of data in the European Union. So we're not talking only about health data, but really about a wide framework and it provides national um, single information points, for example, and also competent bodies, which will support these functions. There's a lot of information in these texts. And there's also a new definition of data altruism organizations, and there will be a future European Data Innovation Board, which is going to be implemented as part of it. So the idea is also to create some intersectionality, so um, some intersector approaches between these different data access bodies. And there's also, as an application, as a concrete application of the Data Governance Act, then from the end of 2021 onwards with the Lex Specialis, the European Health Data Space. This will be specific to the health data perspective, and it will really target um, a national approach, on, it's not, not necessarily a centralized approach, but the approach of having national competent bodies for health data and promoting thereby the health data sharing across countries, across sectors. Let's have a look at the European Health Data Space Joint Action, TEDAS. Why are we looking at this? Because it's very important for France uh, as we're occupying a quite important role in this joint action and very enthusiastic about being in all of these thematic work packages. Thematic means that they are looking at the four topics of health data governance in the fifth joint and the fifth joint action work package, data quality in the sixth, in the seventh looking at architecture and infrastructure of the European health data space, and in the eighth work package about citizens, so how to engage citizens, how to best understand their perceptions, and how to promote data altruism practices. There are also four work packages which are more about coordination, so they're horizontal. And France would like also to follow very closely the fourth work package on sustainability, because it will seek to put in place a very important stakeholder forum. 
So what is the general goal of this joint action? Well, it will seek to create a very clear framework for the secondary use of health data in the European Union and around all of these different thematic areas that I just mentioned. And it will seek to produce very concrete options and deliverables, studies, analyses on these different options to be presented to the European Commission and to be taken into consideration for the European health data space as a next step. But this is not to be seen as an isolated initiative. There are many other initiatives happening at the same time and that the Joint Action TEDAS seeks to collaborate with. For example, there's DEPO, which is a federated infrastructure on health information, which is coordinated by the Belgian public health agency, Cienzano, in which the French Health Data Hub and Santé Publique France, the national health data agency, support uh, by having signed the memorandum of understanding of this future initiative. There's another initiative more focused on COVID-19 data and which closely collaborates and is actually a an implementation of DEPO, which is called FIRE, which is for COVID-19 data. Another joint action uh, is called XE Health, and not on this slide, but also important to know and linked with DEPO is the INFACT joint action on health information, which has actually just closed. I mentioned earlier Gaia X, which is about the creation of a future European cloud, which is uh, currently being discussed and uh, involves a lot of actors. There's the One Plus Million Genomes Initiative and many more others, which are gonna be mobilized as part of the joint action works, work streams, and especially as part of the work package for sustainability. There are a few actors actually, which occupy a quite important role in this joint action. Um, it might be linked to the fact that uh, they are coordinating some work packages or coordinating the whole joint action. So there's a total workload of 500 27.5 person months, which is the unit to calculate the work uh, that's going to be produced by the different entities towards this joint action. Finland with its innovation fund CITRA is coordinating this joint action. So naturally it presents a very important workload in this joint action. But also Spain, because Spain coordinates, co-coordinates work package six on data quality and work package seven on the architecture. Belgium also coordinates uh, work packages, especially work package four, and it's very actively involved in other work packages like the fifth one, for example. And France, and with its competent authority of the Health Data Hub, also has an important part with almost 9% uh, of the workload of this joint action and reuniting almost 12 French entities which take part in this joint action either as affiliates, so they're officially aligned, uh, associated with it, or as experts. And France is present in four work packages, at least, which I'm presenting right now on the next slide. Indeed, uh, this work pack, uh, this joint action has actually already started in February 2021, uh, 2021 I'm sorry. And uh, there's um, a general assembly kicking off this work and this joint action planned on the 1st of March. The budget of the joint action is set at 4 million euros, which is partially funded by the European Commission by 60% and partially by the EU member states. France has an allocation of 44.5 person months. And uh, this represents about 9%, as I mentioned, of this joint action workload and is represented by five national affiliated entities, which are the French eHealth Agency, ANS, the French National Institute for Health and Medical Research, INSERM, with two of its service units, no longer 10, but now it's actually 47, France Corte, and service unit 14, Orphanet, for rare diseases. We also have on board Lyon Hospitals, it's also called HCL, or, um, and as well, uh, Ex-Marseille University and Toulouse 3 University, but many other structures are gonna partake in this joint action as experts, such as the Ministry of Health, the Ministry of Economy and Finance, the Ministry of Research, just to name a few. And this is going to create a, a lot of momentum, a lot of movements, because uh, we're going to coordinate some important work of this. France is co-leading the eighth work package on citizens together with Hungary, and also leading a task on cross-border research collaborations as part of the fifth work package. Why is this important? Just a few words on the future um, of the um, presidency of the EU Council, which is gonna be presided by, by France in the first semester of 2022. 
And uh, the uh, motto, the, um, the, uh, the um, guideline of this uh, presidency will be to create a more inclusive and sovereign European Union and uh, under the guidelines of revival, power and belonging. So it's very ambitious and we're gonna be happy to hopefully present some of the results of the eighth work package study, which we are going to, to lead actually together with Cienzano, the Belgian Public Health Agency and the NHS Confederation which seeks to create a nation, uh, national consultation in these three countries on citizen perception. So there's going to be a platform, um, a consultation platform launched in these three countries to assess the perception of citizens on health data and on the secondary use of health data. So there might be a, guy, a way to present these results as part of the French presidency of the EU Council. Now let's look at the benchmark and the method that we used for, to conduct the benchmark. So first of all, I'd like to present some of the pre pre preliminary results. Actually, the study has been published ever since, so it's no longer preliminary, but the study ha has been published actually in February. It's the EU Health Support Consortium, uh, which has published uh, a, an analy analysis of the implementation of GDPR specific to the health sector. With some really interesting results, we've seen that Access is granted after authorization by research ethic committees or data protection agencies in a total of 22 member states that the data controllers can provide direct access without consultation of an ethics committee of or of a data protection agency in seven countries still. And there is uh, some form of centralized governance body in some form which exists in 13 countries, but we're not experts of this. We'll invite you to look at this study uh, which is uh, a very, very detailed and very uh, coherent approach to this and uh, very informative. I'm taking over again. I'm Iman Didier. I'm working with Luisa at the Health Data Hub. I'm an international policy intern and I'm going to present you the international benchmarking method and giving you an overview of the analyzed structures. An international benchmark will allow the Health Data Hub and its partners to get an overview of the good and best international practices for health data access and health data storage, the relations with data controllers and citizens, the economic models and the scientific valorization rules, to name a few. Besides, the interviews as are a great opportunity to create and develop an international network, source of future potential synergies and maybe prospective partnerships. In this study, 11 countries are represented. We have benefited from an international network gathering more than 500 contacts. 17 structures have been benchmarked and 14 interviews have been conducted. This is a study resulting from a continuous update. Here, an overview of the 11 countries and 17 international structures that have been benchmarked. Here, a more concrete and detailed overview of the structures uh, distributed in two category categories. The category one, the structures hosting and granting access to health data. And the category two, the structures impacting the governance and quality of health data. I'm gonna explain later uh, how we did this repartition. Now we are gonna describe more in detail the data access platforms for the category one structures. First, Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, CMS, was established in 1965 and housed data collected in the framework of the Medicaid and Medicare programs in the United States. CMS provides access to the generated data to researchers and for-profit organizations through the Office of Enterprise Data and Analytics which managed the chronic conditions for data warehouse, the research data distribution center, and the CMS research data enclave. We're looking now at CPRD, the Clinical Practice Research Data Link in the UK, created in 2011, which is a research service within the UK Department of Health. And CPRD data is derived from a UK network of more than 2,000 primary care practices and includes 50 million patients of which 16 million are currently registered as active patients with at least 20 years of follow-up for about 
25% of UK patients. So it's quite immense. And CPRD provides access to academic and private sector researchers from around the world and supports mainly observational public health research. The Benefit Lab Authority has been created in 2015. In the absence of a centralized program on diverse data access, this authority handles all health registries and provides a research support service for researchers who wish to access health data in Denmark. It is also responsible for the national coordination of data exchange systems and infrastructure for the provision of healthcare. Over to Germany with a future platform analysis platform called DATRA which is the future platform for research. It will contain not only medical administrative data from insured individuals in Germany, but it will also be soon a hub for electronic medical records data. And the source of this will be the um, German Federal Association of Health Insurance Funds, GKVSW. Data has been created in 2018. This is the Finnish Health Data Permit Authority to social and health data for research purposes for both public and private actors. Health Data VE in Belgium has been created in 2014 and it is managed by Sinsenu, which is the National Public Health Institute of Belgium, and gathers individual health data collected by both national and regional administrations. The platform is responsible for all data flows related to research within the national e-health system. Health Data BE also offers the following services. First, the provision of pseudonymized data from the data warehouse, and then the operationalization of a new collection of pseudonymized data from healthcare actors. And we have here, in uh, South Korea, which has been created in 2000. This is the Health Insurance Review and Assessment, an institution responsible for reviewing health insurance claims in South Korea. US database hosts all national health insurance service data and is accessed by researchers since 2015 via US data service. We also have the Norwegian Health Data Program, which is planned for 2021 with its health data analysis platform, developed by the Norwegian Directorate of eHealth, which has been itself established in 2016, which seeks to increase the efficiency of access to health data in Norway. The program provides a one-stop shop or it's a gateway uh, for Norwegian health data and thereby accelerating and facilitating current procedures, but it will also enable as I mentioned, the deployment of this health data analysis platform, which will be a very sophisticated data analysis environment for researchers. Then we have Sale Data Bank, created in 2007. Sale, the sales system is a national architecture for e-health research and evaluation, availing anonymized individual level data for research purposes. The data cover the Welsh population. Researchers can access a wide range of data collected regularly over a period of up to 20 years. Cell data is used in many areas of research to assess the impact of health policies. We also have, again, in the UK, the UK Biobank, which is widely known. It's been created in 2006 and uh, is constituted of a cohort of more than 500,000 participants between the ages of 40 and 69, and which contains data collected also since 2006, which are derived from questionnaires and which, which are sent to the participants of this, of this cohort and contains not only biological data, but also samples. The UK Biobank grants access to these data as well, and uh, it uh, has strong links with the researchers, both from public and private sectors who access these data always for research of public interest. And these researchers can register on the UK Biobank database via its access management system. Then we have the description of the category two structures uh, that are impacting data quality and governance. First, the Clinic Research Institute, created in 2014. This is the research arm of Clinic Health Services one of the largest public health providers in Israel. 
The Institute works on health innovation and utilizes data from the impressive cloudy database. Going back to the UK, uh, we are always very impressed to look at HDR UK, Health Data Research UK, which is the UK's Health Data Institute. It brings together nearly 86 organizations, which are part of the UK Health Data Research Alliance, and they are distributed in 56 offices across 32 locations. So the Health Data um, Research UK provides a path to data access, so which is offered by the so-called Innovation Gateway, which is set up by HDR UK. It's a big, big, big metadata catalog, which also offers a visualization of these metadata catalogs of these partner structures. So they do a lot of things also in the health data ecosystem, a lot of events, a lot of outreach, um, very impressive um, institution. Then we have the Health Data Research Network created in 2020 in Canada. This is a not-for-profit network created to facilitate data access procedures for researchers, institutions, and government agencies. The goal of HDRN is to explain the extremely complex and heterogeneous multi jurisdictional data access processes within the healthcare sector across Canada. Health Data Research Network in Canada was created in 2020. This is a not-profit network created to facilitate data access procedures for researchers, institutions, and government agencies. The goal of HDRN is to explain the extremely complex and heterogeneous multi-jurisdictional data access processes within the healthcare sector across Canada. Back to Germany, where we have the Medical Informatics Initiative, Medizin Informatik Initiative in German, which has been created in 2018, and which is established between four university research consortia promoting the exchange and use of health data for medical research. These sites have agreed on a model for regulating the data sharing and exchange practices, including a uniform access procedure uh, mechanism and also the transfer of transfer points which have been put in place with all these participating sites. There are several working groups which are in place, for example, working on citizen involvement, consent, secondary use of health data, how to promote that better, and also how to get involved internationally. So we're following very much this initiative, which is uh, very much a bottom-up approach. National Library of Medicine uh, is an innovation center created in 1836. And this is part of the US Department of Health and Human Services. It is the world's largest biomedical library, producing electronic information resources on a wide range of key topics for the healthcare system. A lot is to be learned from X-Road from Estonia, widely quoted as an example of innovation of data transfer between public administrations created in 2001. This infrastructure in Estonia is called X-Road and it's based on the XT cloud, which enables the exchange and interaction of the exchange of data between different information systems, uh, both of the public, but also private sector e-services. E and this system provides a comprehensive overview of the entire ecosystem uh, of data ecosystem for the government. Then we will give you some details about the method. First, uh, it was an update of the analysis creed and the structuration of the interviews uh, creed. Uh, we updated the categories used for the 2018 benchmark conducted by the Health Data Hub. And we included new analysis criteria as citizens and COVID-19 initiatives, but also strategic roadmap, for instance, the scientific valorizations or communication and external collaborations, to name a few. Then we identified and organized the contact with the international health data access and governance structures. And then we cons have consolidated the content of the interviews into reports from which we did use detailed data sheets. Here, an overview of the interview outline. We have the category, the topic addressed, and then the specific questions that has been asked. And an extract out of the restitution sheet I have mentioned for the category one structures. This is for now in, only in French. 
Analysis on, of information and the distribution into category one and two is explained here. The reports were analyzed and we identified two, structure, two categories. Category one structures are the one including the structure hosting data and directly comparable to the Has Data Hub. The category two structures impact the governance and quality of Has Data at both the national and international level without being directly comparable to the Has Data Hub and without having um, a storage platform or uh, data access procedures. Then the structures when were analyzed according to the specific study topics, platforms, scientific valorization, communication, citizens engagement and involvement, and COVID-19 data related initiatives. We have first the observed practices and their frequency. The common practice is defined as a frequently observed practice common to more than 50% of the platforms. Another practice is defined as a practice observed less frequently in less than 50% of the observed structures. Then we proposed for each study topic one or several highlights, which is an example uh, that is identified among the structures for each topic of study. Highlighting whether this example differs from the general observation, unique practice, or if the practice has had a positive echo within the international community. We are going to propose you two focuses. The first one on Fin data. The study conducted reveals that the HDH is very close to the Finnish model Fin data. And its example will be presented in detail at the beginning of our presentation of the results. At the end of the presentation of results, we are going to focus on data altruism. The Urban Commission emphasizes that data altruism or data solidarity, a principle by which organizations or and citizens can decide to avail their, their data to for research purposes will have a more prominent role at the European Union level in the future. We will detail the modalities and frequency of data altruism initiatives across the EU. Then we are moving forward to the presentation of the results by subject of analysis for the structures directly comparable to the Health Data Hub. As promised, we're gonna give you a focus on one of the similar structures to the Health Data Hub in France, which is FinData, a unique access point to health and social data in Finland. It is a data permit authority and uh, also a one-stop shop or gateway to access health and social data in Finland, operational since January, 2020, with the objective to provide fast, secure, and easy access to individual level social and health data FinData grants access to data from multiple registries and data, data controllers in Finland, collects the requested data from these registries and data controllers to combine them, pseudonymize them, and finally deliver the data via a secure remote project environment. It has a very um, important legal basis with the act on the secondary use of health and social data, even available in English language, uh, which is the legal basis for the implementation of FinData. This act specifies the purposes for which access to data may be requested. And these are among others, statistical purposes, scientific research for innovation and development, education, supervision and guidance of social and health authorities. How is FinData governed? What's the governance structure? So there's a steering group, which was um, charged with defining the provisions of the, this act that I just mentioned. And it's, uh, it includes some representatives uh, such as data controllers and uh, is responsible for guiding and developing FinData operations. FinData is supervised by LaVira, a national agency of the Finnish Ministry of Health, but also the National Institute of Health and the Data Protection Agency of Finland. Looking at the data sources, FinData grants permissions for data collected in public and private services that are part of the national data sources defined by law, including the Finnish Institute of Health and Welfare, THL, the National Health Insurance Fund, Statistics Finland, uh, Digital and Demographic Data Services Agency, the University Hospital of Helsinki, the Finnish Cancer Registry, 
other university hospitals as well, but also the Finnish Center for Pensions and Cities of Helsinki, Espo, Vanta, and others, uh, which provide data to Finn data. Then we have our first subject of analysis, uh, the results for the platforms. The, ben the observed common trend is that ben benchmarked platforms of category one guarantee an operational and technological platform for data storage, developed whether on national or non-European scale, guaranteeing high standards for, of quality and security, particularly for the protection of the privacy and identifiable data. Note that the future German data platform is not included here. First, we have the technology cloud platform. The common practice is that six out of the 10 category one structures have a non-European technological platform. This is the case of CPRD, the UK Biobank, the Health Data Program of Norway, Sail Data Bank, Health Data BE, and the Danish Health Data Authority. The other practice is that four out of the 10 category one structures have a non-own technological platform, FinData, Hira, CMS, and the Regan Street Institute. Here, we decided to highlight FinData because its platform is based on the Finnish ePuta infrastructure for sensitive data. This cloud developed in Finland offers a complete service including ePuta, ePuta Remote Desktop, and a sensitive data management platform. Then, how to access data? What are the modalities to access health data? The common practice is that six out of 10 of the category one structures offer data access via a secure project space. The other practice um, is that three out of 10 of the category one structures offer direct data transfer to the user, CPRD, UK Bank, and HUR. Here we highlighted the double system arrow, the Regan Street Institute. The anonymized data is transferred directly to the user, but personal data can be only accessed on the Regan Street Secure Search environment. Results for the business models, um, we observed a common trend that fees for granting access to data for data extraction services or for using the secure project environment are common. Two practices are then observed, the differentiation of fees among different actors and the guarantee of the same fees for all actors accessing the data. Here, the health data program is not included. For the pricing system, the common practice is that seven out of 10 category one platforms charge for project specific services, data extraction services, for instance. FinData, the Danish Health Authority, Health Data BE, Cell Data Bank, CMS, Hira, and Datraf. The other practice is that four out of 10 category one platforms charge for data less licenses and permits. This is the case for FinData, the Regan Street Institute, CPRD, and the UK Biobank. Here, we uh, propose an highlight on FinData because it applies a fee for the access review, the granting of uh, access to health data, the, uh, the services associated with the preparation per hour, and uh, FinData consults data controllers uh, for an estimation of the fees for data extractions. FinData also applies a different, different pricing according to the type of actors. Regarding the differentiation of fees, the common practice is that six of, out of 10 category one platforms apply different pricing to actors according to their type whether they're national or international companies or national or international researchers. This is the case for CMS, FinData, CPRG, Health Data BE, Regan Street Institute, and Dutch Lab. The other practice is that four of 10 category and platforms apply the same pricing with a differentiation. For instance, the Danish Health Data Authority, Hira, UK Biobank, and Cell Data Bank. Here, we, are, we have an highlight on the Danish Health Authority that applies the 
the same pricing for all the actors. But on the other hand, we have uh, in Denmark an assistance for, from the Danish Research Organization, CORE, to finance the platform services. And the industrial entities are not el eligible to the assistance. For the scientific valorizations, the observed common thread is that publication rules are not homogeneous. However, all the platforms studied require to be mentioned in publications. Open science practices can take the form of publishing research results or availing relevant documentation to the public. Note that FinData and Health Data Program and DATRAV have not yet set publication rules. For the publication rules, we have the common practice that out of eight category one structures that provided the information, all of them request to be mentioned in the publications. The other practice is that two out of eight of the category one structures that provided information may grant a period of exclusivity under data, nine to 12 months. This is the case for Health Data BE and UK Biobank. Here, uh, we have this really interesting practice from CPRD that um, deploys an audit committee, which is responsible on an ad hoc basis to verify the concordance between the research protocol submitted at the time of the data request and the publications. The common practices for open science is that out of 10 category one structures that provided information on this topic, including here in data, six requested that publications be, has to be published and have to be published and made freely available. Seven out of 10 structures that provided the information on this topic have an online documentation, for instance, data guide or metadata catalogs. We highlighted here, here are, um, who published statistics on health services, including healthcare expenditures, the utilization, um, including prescriptions, medical conditions, and providers. All those informations are publicly available through the HIWA Open Data Healthcare System. For the public relations, communication, and advertising, we have a common thread observed. The structures analyzed have the best communication and public relations strategies. Here, we um, will give you the results for all the categories. Some um, communication practices are more advanced than others, but often with the common goal of broadening that footprint on social networks by targeting citizens to promote information and health data and to immerse the structure in the virtual ecosystem through the creation of an easily accessible website. The common practice is that 14 out of 17 of all the benchmarked structures here have an operational website and publish their news and even details of their access procedure if applicable for these category one structures. And also documentation targeting applicants and the general public. The other practices are that five structures out of 17, HIWA, UK Biobank, HRUK, CMS and the MII publicly organize online events. Three structures out of 17, Regan Strief, CMS and HRUK have their own online podcast, respectively the problem, CMS Beyond the Policy, and the Genetics podcast. We have two highlights. The first one on HR UK that has elaborated a real communication strategy. A network of nearly 60 people has been mobilized to manage the website as well as the different social networks. They are really active on the social media. And the Cell Data Bank uh, that publishes the comments on, for, from the project coordinators on the homepage of their website. Regarding resu the results for the citizen engagement, we have observed that the information on citizens' rights, consent, or an, an existence of an opt-out procedure, for instance, is unanimously made available. The inclusion of 
citizens in the governance of the structures is less frequent. Not that HTTP and that drive did not provide information. Regarding citizens' rights, we have the common practice that shows that five category one structures allow citizens to withdraw that data. And two category one structures are entirely based on the citizen data donation on an opt-in system. This is the case for CPRD and the UK Biobank. Here, the Danish Health Data Authority has been highlighted. The structure guarantees the right to address. The patients can request correction on their information. There are also a database hosting citizen requests for allowing the secondary use of their biobank health data. For the information for and towards citizens, we have the common practice that all structures offering an open website include a category for citizens' right or privacy. The other practice is that two category one structures propose a self-access. Citizens can obtain a copy and access the data concerning themselves directly on the website. This is, for instance, the case for Wigan Institute and the Danish Health Authority. Here we highlighted not a structure, but an initiative on destining patient data um, that is managed by the Wellcome Trust, the Medical Research Council on Public Health in England in the United Kingdom, to support the understanding of secondary use of patient data, but also among the public services. The citizens are not will really often represented in the structure, but this is the case for three category one structures. Cell Data Bank, Health Data BE, and Regan Street Institute that include in the governance very specific committees um, committed to the citizen representation or representants of patient associations. This is the case for Health Data BE. The highlight here is on Cell Data Bank. The Cell Public Engagement Team organizes events to promote sales activities to the public. Data perception survey with the Sale Data Bank consumer panel are also organized. Who were the game changers in the COVID-19 crisis? We observe that across all categories combined, the structures have mobilized resources to support the centralization and exploitation of COVID-19 data. Through key initiatives and data visualizations dashboards, and to enable project coordinators to access data more quickly than usual. The common practice is that all the category one data platforms that provided information, except the health data program of Norway and Tatra, that are in their implementation phase, have accelerated data access procedures for COVID 19 research. The other practice is that eight structures out of 17 offer a metadata catalog or other tools for the COVID-19 data visualizations. Regan Strief, has data VE, SAIL, UK Biobank, CPRG, HRN, CMS, and HR UK. Two initiatives have been highlighted among the category two structures. First, the International COVID-19 Data Alliance, ICODA managed by the HGR UK. This is an international platform that allows researchers to access global data to quickly obtain information on COVID-19 and to accelerate treatment development. This alliance includes HGRN, UK Biobank, and CPRG, three structures included in our study. We have the Medical Informatics Initiative in Germany that is involved in the COCOS Initiative which is a multi-stakeholder initiative to establish uniform COVID-19 data formats, and also involved in the German Corona consensus that prioritized the data collection, the COVID-19 data collection from the university hospitals for constructing compact research database. European Commission points out the importance of developing at a national and European levels, the concept of data altruism. This is our last focus. 
it would allow organizations and even citizens to make data available for research purposes. Only two EU member states have so far implemented the plan to introduce a national data tourism system, Denmark and Germany. Some initiatives comparable to altruistic practices have also been observed in the United Kingdom. Starting in 2023, the Patient Data Protection Act in Germany will give to insurance citizens the ability to make their electronic medical record data available to researchers. In Denmark, there is a two-year strategy for the implementation of altruistic practices that has been developed. Secure spaces for hosting the data of citizens who wish to share it will be opened from the Sendeg platform. So-called bottom-up non-governmental initiatives are also emerging, such as the Next Database, which aims to facilitate the registration of citizens who wish to participate in clinical trials. In UK, several British initiatives have been identified. Among them, the shares Scottish Health Research Register initiative of the National Health Service in Scotland. This is a registry of patients that have over 11 years of age who consent to participate in research based on their health data. According to the EU Health Support Consortium study, 14 countries are willing to implement a model of data altruism at the national level, and 11 countries are willing to implement it at the European level. To finish with, we will present you some best practices from other actors of the health data international ecosystem that are the category two structures. To go further, we have other data governance structures whose mandates are not exactly comparable to those of the HDH that have been identified and provide a meaningful visualization of the key players of the ecosystem of secondary use of health data and their distinctive practices. About federating the actors in the health data ecosystem, we have Health Data Research UK, which have developed the Innovation Gateway, which is a unique portal for researchers enabled enabling visualizations of available data through an orange catalog of metadata from members of the UK Health Data Research Alliance. Health Data Research UK also includes eight research and data collection hubs across the UK. Regarding intensifying and encouraging data sharing between the research community and the health system, we have the example of the data integration centers developed by the Medical Informatics Initiative for Consortia. The data integration centers create the technical and organizational conditions necessary for the data use processes between healthcare systems and medical research across multiple sites. For supporting project coordinators, the Health Data Research Network in Canada have developed the strategy for patient-oriented research Canadian data platform that aims to create a system to support access to health data. The service includes the Data Access Support Hub, which is a single window data access service portal for researchers requiring multi-jurisdictional data in Canada. Regarding the establishment of good practices and quality standards, we highlighted here the National Library of Medicine that develops and distributes the NLM's classification system. The system is widely used by academic medical libraries to organize their collections. The NLM staff work with international cataloging and archival standards, including Dublin Corp, MARC, and other ICO standards, as well as international data standardization and terminologies. What about providing evidence, the health data, to implement new public policy? or the evidence-based policymaking. This is the mission of the CLANIT Research Institute. The CLANIT Health Services Research Institute use its large database, mainly enriched with electronic medical records to develop predictive health tools 
and to develop new innovative health practices. The organization offers multiple use cases published in major scientific journals, such as Nature or BNG. XWorld provides a data infrastructure to connect governmental services. This is a registry and data exchange system between different public services based on the XT cloud. This infrastructure drastically facilitates exchanges between the government and citizens. The government and healthcare actors can directly access certain information on the database and citizens can access all services through the portal as 99% of the public services in Estonia are digitized thanks to a unique identifier EID. Thank you for your attention. This work is a constant update process, so I will happy to uh, share another version of this benchmark with you, maybe sometime end of this year, 2021. If not, uh, keep us posted on your uh, changes of your structures, any new initiatives um, by emailing us at international at healthdatahub.fr. The link is going to be included, the email address is going to be included in this presentation caption. Thank you so much for your interest and for having been attentive to this. Bye-bye.